Well, hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today to do my book haul revisit for the month of January. So if you follow along, you're familiar with these, but if you're not, basically what I do here is I look at the previous year's book haul for that month and kind of check through how many of the books I have read, if I have unhauled any of them, things like that. And it's just kind of a kind of accountability measure for myself. Once I get to the month of March, it, it, things are going to change a little bit because I will actually have two years worth of book hauls to revisit. But for now, for January and February, only one. So I'm looking back at my January book haul from the year 2020. I will link the original book haul video down below. This is a big one. So let's get right into it. There are some good books, of books I'm still really interested in, some I'm not so sure about. And we're starting off with one that I am not so sure about. It is American Dirt by Janine Cummins. This book, who boy, it's very controversial. If you haven't followed along, basically the controversy is not so much about the quality of the book itself. This actually got a lot of advanced praise before it was published. And then it pretty much as soon as it hit bookshelves, there was just a firestorm of controversy. It has blurbs from Stephen King, John Grisham, Julia Alvarez, Sandra Cisneros, uh, and Patchett. There's a, uh, it, it is called A Grapes of Wrath for Our Time by Don Winslow right there on the cover. There actually was a really interesting article recently tracing the controversy about it and how it really it's the marketing of the book that ultimately led, let this book down and made it really problematic. And you can see some of it um, in one instance, the author, I, I believe it was the author, uh, went to an event for the book with uh, her nails painted with this kind of barbed wire pattern from the book. They had an event where they had floral arrangements that had the barbed wire in them. Nobody realized that that was kind of problematic. <laughs> and I, I, basically a lot of it comes down to the marketing of the book and how it was pretty deliberately positioned as, or Jeanine Cummins was pretty deliberately positioned as someone who is an expert on the subject, particularly because her husband was at one time undocumented. However, nobody really knew or noticed that her husband is Irish <laughs> and she is writing about people who try to move from uh, come across the border from Mexico into the U.S. Very different situation. So, yeah, and given all that, I've kind of gone back and forth. Steve Donahue sent me a copy of this book, by the way. Thank you, Steve. He sent me a couple of these, actually. And I've been waffling back and forth all year about whether or not this is something I actually want to read, and I haven't quite made up, made up my mind, but I think at this point it's kind of unlikely that I will so I haven't officially made up my mind, but this is likely to be something that is going to end up getting traded in at my local used bookstore. But we'll see. I may I may give it a shot. We, I might not. To be determined. But right now, that's kind of where I'm sitting with this. I think it's just... from What, I, what I've heard about the book itself isn't bad, but a lot of the stuff that happened around the book, for instance, even uh, Janine Cummins' book tour was canceled. She said that she was receiving death threats. It turned out she had received no death threats at all. A lot of that stuff has kind of left a bad taste in my mouth, so I, I have a feeling this is something I'm just going to take a pass on. The next book is another one that was sent by Steve Donahue. It's The Big Goodbye, Chinatown and the Last Years of Hollywood by Sam Wasson. Sam Wasson wrote uh, Fifth Avenue, 5 a.m. I believe he also wrote Fosse Burden, but I could be wrong about that. No, he did. Uh, so he wrote Fosse, which was the basis of the TV show Fosse Burden. When they adapted it, they changed the name to include uh, Gwen Burton, which was actually really smart. Uh, and I did enjoy that book, uh, which is, and I, if you follow along, you know I also really love the movies. I love I'm old Hollywood, anything like the, the Oscars, anything like that just fascinates me. So this is really something that is in my wheelhouse. Have not gotten around to it, but very much am looking forward to it. This is something that I wanted to get in in 2020, but it didn't fit with my reading goal. Didn't. Uh, that and a book by Mark Harris, Five Came Back, both about the movies, both just didn't fit with the reading goals that I had for the year, so I kept putting them off and putting them off, and this is something I really want to try to get to in 2021 now that I don't have a reading goal and can focus a little bit about things that I enjoy and just kind of pick my own way. So, obviously, this is about the making of the movie Chinatown and uses that as a framework to look at the last years of old Hollywood, kind of similar to, if you follow along, you know I love Mark Harris's book, Pictures at a Revolution, which traces the end of old Hollywood and the beginning of new Hollywood, Hollywood as we know it, by looking at the movies that were nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars for the year 1968. Those were The Graduate, In the Heat of the Night, Bonnie and Clyde, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, and Dr. Doolittle. 
and it, it really interesting. So this, it can, in a similar way, uses the framework of a specific thing to talk about the larger issue of how Hollywood was changing and how it was changing so drastically. So I definitely want to get to this, and it will be something I keep on my shelf. Next is another book I did not manage to get in in 2020, and I'm hoping I, I, I will pull off <laughs> reading in 2021. Real Life by Brandon Taylor. This was also sent to me by Steve Donahue. Thank you, Steve. So this I'm sure you're all familiar with at this point because it went on to have quite the year. It was longlisted and shortlisted for the Booker Prize. Obviously, it did not win. It lost to Shuggy Bain. But I've heard really good things about it. I have heard some negative things, but mostly positive, and I am still really looking forward to it. This is about a black man in America who faces discrimination on a college campus. So this is definitely something I want. To, it's like a wrong that I want to correct in 2021 that I haven't read it yet. So I'm hoping I will be getting to this soon. We shall see. It's absolutely something that is going to stay on my shelf until I do, for sure. The next one is, I believe, the final book that was sent to me by Steve Donahue. It's Conditional Citizens on Belonging in America by Leila Lalami. I actually just started this book, but I started it on audio uh, instead. So I am reading it, just not in this format. And I'm not very far into it yet at the time I'm recording this video, uh, but I, I am very much enjoying it so far. It is really interesting. Basically, this is about her experience as an immigrant and uh, using that as a framework to talk about the larger experience of immigrants in America and how some are seen as more acceptable than others and how she is treated like somebody who is in limbo like she is of America but not of America at the same time after getting citizenship and I, it's a very interesting book so far and I'm glad that I have gotten around to reading it. The next book is an itty bitty one it is A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood. My plan was I got one of these tiny pocket editions uh, from Picador Modern Classics really cute cover and I was surprised by how it seems like it I, I was worried that print would be tiny it's not it doesn't seem look really flimsy but anyway point just being I, it's a single man by um Christopher Isherwood I did see the movie but the only book by Christopher Isherwood I have read is the one that inspired Cabaret which was Berlin Stories and I believe The Last of Mrs. Norris one of whom one of those had this the character of Sally Bowles and I've always wanted to read more books by Christopher Isherwood. I had been originally planning that I would read this in June. In June, I try to read, focus on LGBTQ books. So my plan when I got this in January was to do that. And then it, as June came around, I kind of threw out my original Pride Month TBR and focused on black queer stories. So this kind of went by the wayside. It is something I'd still definitely, definitely, definitely want to read and hope to get to bit soon. Maybe, th maybe this coming June. I haven't decided uh, what I want to focus on for Pride Month this year, but this will likely factor in somehow. Then I was really into this vintage Japan series early last year. They're very pretty editions of books. So I got out by Mitsuo Kurino, translated by Stephen Snyder. This is something I have not gotten around to. I had also been thinking that because part of my Read Outside Your Comfort Zone challenge, which was, which was my reading goal for 2020, was to read more books by authors who are not in the unit North America or Europe, that this would be a great fit for that. Never got around to it in the year. I still very much want to read it. If I remember right, this seems like something that kind of crosses a thriller with a regular drama. Yes, so um, it looks like it's about four women who work in a, work in a factory. One of them uh, strangles her husband, and they try to cover up the crime, but body parts are discovered. Police start asking questions, and enemies start to close in. I mean, it sounds like a fascinating book, and I've heard really good things about it, so I am very much looking forward to reading Out by Natsuo Carino. Then we have The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This is also something I had gotten for my Read Outside Your Comfort Zone challenge, because as part of that, I wanted to read um, a sci-fi book, a fantasy book, and I had earmarked this one as fantasy. It is the first part of the Broken Earth trilogy, I believe. Yes, the Broken Earth trilogy, and I had actually started it in July, I think, but I really did not get far. Do I still have my bookmark? I do. I made it 33 pages in, in July, and just didn't want to do it at the time. Kind of, I, I had been thinking I would circle back by the end of the year, and then I ended up canceling my reading goal for 2020. 
and didn't have to get to it. I still very much want to read this book. I've heard really good things about it. I've heard really good things about N.K. Jemisin. So it's, it's still on my priority list. I just kind of need to get to it at some point. Then we have Such a Long Journey by Rohinton Mystery. So if you follow along, you might remember that A Fine Balance by Rohinton Mystery was my second favorite read in 2019. I really loved it. Any other year, it probably would have been my number one read of the year. I, I just loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Let me say I loved it one more time because I did. And at the beginning of last year, I had been planning to do this as a buddy read with Sean the Book Maniac in the month of February. And just as we were supposed to start the book, I ended up needing to have unexpected hernia repair surgery for my for ab abdominal hernia repair. So I ended up laid out for the month of February and um, did not get to participate in the buddy read. And I did not read the book. I think I had actually started it. I can't remember how far I got. The bookmark is not in it. But I didn't I started it as I was supposed to be getting ready for surgery and did not remember anything I read. So I ended up not really reading much of anything in February. So there was an attempt to read this book. Didn't get very far. And it is something I, I would still be interested in. Like I said, I really loved A Fine Balance. And I've heard kind of mixed things about this. But I'm really interested to try another book by Mystery at some point. And this seems like a good one to try. Then we have a book that I unhauled. I did read it. It's Cloud Street by Tim Winton. I had purchased it, again, as part of my read outside of your comfort zone challenge because I wanted to read an Australian author. And Tim Winton is sort of seen as the quintessential Australian author to many Australians. I did not like it. I did it as a buddy read with Sarah from Hardcover Hearts back in the month of April, for Aussie April. Um, I think we caught like the tail end. I, I, I can't remember the exact timing. But I, we either started it in April or we ended in April. I think we started in it anyway. It doesn't matter. I didn't like the book. So I unhauled it. I gave it back. <laughs> well, I didn't give it back. Uh, I took it to the local used bookstore and exchanged it. Actually, I had gotten it from them in the first place. So I did take it back <laughs> and uh, I'm moving on with my life. I, I definitely want to read more Australian literature. I just think I might take a little bit of a pass on Tim Winton. It would probably be some time before I try him again. Then we get to something I did actually manage to read, Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry. Now, this was also intended to be part of my Read Outside Your Comfort Zone challenge because part of that was that I wanted to read genres I don't traditionally read, and Westerns are definitely them. It also fit with my Pulitzer Prize project, so it checked two boxes at once. And I had started it as a buddy read with um, Rick McDonald from Another Kick at the Candlet. Uh, Ultimately, we were supposed to start it in March for March of the Mammoths, and then the pandemic hit and lockdown hit and things got stressful. He dropped off. I did eventually finish the book, and I'm really glad I did. It was one of my top four favorite reads of 2020. I did a longer review of it for my Pulitzer Prize project where I talked about whether or not it's the great American novel. I will link that down below. It's a fantastic book. If you're unfamiliar, it is about a cattle drive from the Texas-Mexico border up to Montana and the difficulties that they face in doing it. In doing so, it is a very subversive Western. You could read this book and not really pick up on any of the ways in which it is subversive, which is a criticism a lot of people have of it, but I think it's absolutely there. And it's very much questioning the myth-making of both America and the Old West, and I think that is really fascinating. And as an added bonus, Larry McMurtry looks like Howard from The Great Britain. <laughs> The Great British Baking Show. Just point of interest right there. So as I was reading the book, I found that really amusing all the time. Then we have a book that was actually gifted to me by an employee at the bookstore. I go to my favorite bookstore in town, which is Shakespeare and Company. It's Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy. The Story of Little Women and Why It Still Matters by Anne Boyd Rue. I started out 2020 doing a buddy read of Little Women with Britta Bowler. We were actually had started it in December. She finished it in December of 2019. I carried it into 2020. And the woman who worked at the bookstore was really excited that I was reading it because she loved it. And uh, I saw her pretty much every Sunday when I went in. So she ordered this for me and gave it to me as a gift. And I am very interested in reading it, but I have not gotten around to it yet. And it, I, I feel like I need to try to do it soon because I should try to read it before I get a lot of distance between me and Little Women, the book. So 
I, if, and I think there is a very interesting story behind the making of Little Women and the, how Louisa May Alcott relates to the story and how she's kind of a stand-in for Joe and how she kind of compromised a lot of her vision in order to drive the commercial success of Little Women, which was published in installments, and how she ultimately published a sequel. And I think the push-pull dynamic of what she wanted to do and what her readers expected her to do is really interesting. So I would love to get to this at some point. And again, I should feel like I should do it before I get really far away from the experience of having read Little Women myself. Then we get to three books by Sarah Waters that I picked up at my local used bookstore, the book exchange. The first one is Affinity. I read my very first Sarah Waters book in 2019. It was The Pain Guest. Uh, a lot of people who like Sarah Waters say it's not what it is not really the best one to start. It's one of her lesser books. So I but I liked it and maybe because it was my first I didn't have anything to compare it to, but I definitely want to read more and so I picked up Affinity and Fingersmith, and I'm dropping books, Tipping the Velvet. So between these three, <laughs> I, I didn't have any real intention of getting to them quickly. I just kind of wanted to, wanted to have them on my shelf and so I could get to them in turn, at, you know, over time. Uh, so there was actually no urgency behind getting them, but I had kind of thought in the back of my mind, maybe one of them for June when I focus on Pride Month and Pride Month reads. Uh, and obviously my Pride Month TBR of last year went out the window because I already explained what happened with that. So maybe this June, but I don't want to pack my TBR for June. I'm famously bad at TBRs if you follow along. So I, but I definitely do want to read more Sour Waters. And I listened to the first one as an audio and I think the audio presentation was so good that it actually made me like The Pain Guest more. So I want to try uh, my next book by her, whichever of these three it will be, or if, even if it ends up being a different one, uh, in physical form, so I can compare the experience and see how that does. Then there's another book I don't have anymore. It's Tightrope by Nicholas Kristoff and Cheryl Wudun. I believe they are a married couple. It focuses on um, a town in Washington, I believe it could be Oregon, and uh, uses that as... Um, sort of an example for how America is coping and the difficult and uh, difficult economic circumstances people face, the opioid crisis and things like that. I had gotten it from Book of the Month Club and kind of realized at a certain point that if I read this book, I'm going to listen to the audio. So I, I have a hold on the audio somewhere. Don't remember where. It's either Scribd or Libby. And if I read this book, it will probably be that way. So I took a chance on taking it to Book Exchange, and they took it. So that's kind of the way it is. I, I feel a little bad. <laughs> it didn't even last a year in my library, but like I said, I think one thing I've really learned doing these book haul revisits is that I should be really intentional about how much I want to read something and what format I'm likely to read it in. And in that case, it seemed really obvious that that is something that I, that if I read, it's going to be on audio. So I needed space on my shelf. So I kind of just went that way. It is what it is. So that is 15 books that I hauled in January of 2020. Of those, I definitely read two that uh, Cloud Street and Lonesome Dove. And I started the fifth season and need to get back to it. And I started such a long journey and need to get back to it. So there were an additional two that I kind of started and didn't had, a, had an aborted attempt to read. And there were two books that I unhauled. One was Cloud Street because I hated it. And one was Tightrope. Not because I hadn't even read it, but I just felt like I was more likely to read it in a different format. So I went with that instead. So altogether, not bad. There's still a lot of books in here that I want to read need to get around to reading. If you have thoughts about any of these books, I would love to hear it. Drop it in the comment section down below. If you have recommendations based on these, please let me know that as well. If you think there are any of these I should let go, sure, drop it in the comment section down below. You know what to do. As always, I really appreciate your time. I appreciate you following along. If you do, I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.